Hello, Miss Stephanie at anoracorner.com, which I will put also at the end. All right. So, hello, Eric. Love you guys both. Stephanie Paris and Eric Medhus. Eric Last says night. he loves you, Mama. <laughs> what are we going to call that? Uh, Stepheric. Stepheric. He's like rubbing his hands together already today. He's so funny. Like he was with me earlier. He was making fun of me because I cut down on caffeine. Oh, and he's like, no. he's like, he's like, maybe you should have another cup of coffee. I'm like, maybe no. afterwards, because he gets no. me feeling a little no. hyper sometimes. <laughs> it's so good. Mm. All those things that smells better than it tastes, though. But anyway. Yeah, yeah. It's mm. pretty good. All right, so, so we're going, to go. this is part three of the missing children. Very interesting. This, we'll start with Jessica Gutierrez. Uh, the four-year-old was kidnapped from, these are always so hard, from her uh, bed June 6, 1986 in South Carolina. Her sister, Becky, told authorities that the man with the magic hat and the beard took her last night as their mom frantically searched uh, their home. Uh, I need to find my daughter, Gutierrez's mother, now 60, told the state in 2017. I don't know how much time I have left. So... What happened to Jessica Gutierrez, Eric? Or, and we can so what so actually, Eric, Angel, spirit, spirit yeah, no, no, Eric is here, and um, I actually, I actually feel um, the presence of uh, family members of her family members here as well. Um, and Eric is talking about a former, um, former partner a former ex-boyfriend that kind of thing that um she was only four years old though so. right right and this is of the, the mom either the mother or I, i'm getting like someone in relation to the family this is like okay. a former ex-boyfriend who um eric is saying like this person was a pedophile um this person also had um Wow, like very uh, unbalanced, almost like uh, multiple personality disorder or like some kind of um, oh. bipolar disorder as well. Like there's a con combination of like mental disease with this particular individual who yeah. um, took this child. Yeah. Um, he's saying that... Um, he says that this individual has already passed away as well. Oh, the, the pedophile and Jessica also. Well, what happened to her? What did he do to her? Um, he took her and what I'm seeing is Eric is showing me like he had been watching her and watching her like play. Um, and he had been watching her for some time. It's kind of like, the P is he, Eric saying like very close to the someone this person is very close to the family so he had this interaction like they would have a dialogue as you would with a little kid like you'd play peekaboo with them or hide and go seek or something of that nature um I, I'm getting very sad I'm sorry it's just like um it's very heavy I even feel it in my throat but oh, yeah. um, and this little girl she She's actually here as well. And she she's saying that um, this man had taken her um, and had taken her on a very long car ride and they're showing me to California. I've seen California license plate. Okay. Um, and that they also took her not to a major city. It was like going through one of, um, uh, did you say Yosemite? Yosemite. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, like a, a large, like a national park, like it's a, a large national park, that kind of thing. Okay. Um, and the Monument Valley or something, or well, I don't, no, I don't even know where that that is. Never mind. I'm I'm seeing a lot. Uh, I'm, I I heard you like Yosemite, but I'm seeing like a lot of large trees and like okay. it feels like one of these like national state parks. Okay. okay. And what I'm getting is that um. She was sexually assaulted, um, and there was, unfortunately, I, I feel very tight in the throat, there was a strangula strangulation involved. Yeah. Um, 
And then what I'm also getting is that um, it's as if like her body was um, stuffed in what feels like a brown packaging box, like one like that you would use to move. Box? Mm -hmm. yeah. One that you would use to move. Um, I actually see on the box it actually says this end up. Oh. Um, ooh, sorry, <laughs> it's a little very emotional for me. Eric is saying that um, her body was actually not even buried. It oh. was like left to decay. So like in the forest behind a tree? Uh, in, like yeah, like in the woods. Yeah, yeah. It, it was left to decay. It, that's That blows my mind. Was it um, closed? The top closed on it? or open? Eric says that um, the top was closed and it feels like it was almost like like you know how like uh, military people camouflage things like yeah. with oh yeah yeah so it feels like branches and leaves and like things were on top of this box so that's why it it has not been found uh, I'm not gonna animals that. eventually get to to the body or did it just Eric says Eric says no it's just rot and decay oh yeah. Well, uh, well, so how did the guy die? How did he die? Through a series of his own, like, misfortunate events, how he was provoked. He became a very, I'm getting that he became, um, I'm seeing a lot of, like, alcohol bottles, like a really bad alcoholic. He's, I definitely know he was a whiskey drinker, so I could see that. Um, and it was, like, then later on he got into... I'm getting prescription drugs as well. Like overdose? Okay. Mm -hmm, like a cocktail of things. And um, it that caused him to phase out. I'm also hearing he had um, brain aneurysm. Oh, that's a bad combo. Mm -hmm. so, so it was like... A contract of some sort or not? Yeah, he had a contract and this person... Eric says like it stems from like... Um, past life because he had done so many um, he's I don't like to use the word nefarious but nefarious nefarious deeds at times you know that, like, that just comes out like he had done so much but it was to shed light also to this little girl's family as well mm -hmm. And also I'm getting like, there was a disconnect within some of the family as well. Like people were in disbelief that she was even um, kidnapped. Yeah. Like there was a disassociation with the family. Um, Eric is giving me the feeling and he's kind of saying that like there was friction between like the mother and like the rest of the family. Like she may have it potentially been negligent in her care at times as well okay so so they there was, pointed fingers at her yeah yeah there was like an unbalance who was he the, the ex-boyfriend of um, somebody in the immediate family or a, like a aunt I'm getting or? someone in the immediate family yes yes um the mother Someone in the mother's immediate family, like he was a boyfriend of someone in the mother's immediate family. Um, an aunt, or one of her cousins, or well, her one of her sisters, mother's sisters. Eric says, "Yeah, it it could have been one of the um, okay. It's, it's a familiar. It's a familiar. It's like yes, I'm getting it is probably the mother's sister because I see another woman who looks like the mother, like okay. this kind of thing." So I see that there's a direct relation. All right. Um, well, let's, we'll go on to the next one. Hopefully it's more cheerful. Probably not. The Sauter family children. Uh, this is uh, quite some time ago. The Sauter family children on Christmas Eve, 1945, a fire broke out um, at the Sauter home. Of their nine children, four escaped. The house burned down completely before the fire was able to be put out and the other five children were nowhere to be found. Not even teeth were able to be salvaged. The fire chief at the time concluded the fire had been hot enough to melt bone and death certificates were issued, but that claim has been challenged over the years. Other theories claim that the Sodders were the target of organized crime 
that the fire had been set intentionally and that the ladder that was usually propped up against their home had been stolen. Years later, Jenny, the Sodder matriarch, received a photo in the mail captioned Louis uh, Sodder, one of their sons who had been ruled dead. He was nine years old at the time of the, fo- uh, of the fire. The living Sodders maintained that their si- siblings did not die in the fire and that something suspicious went down that Christmas Eve. Hmm. Were they taking you know out what, the you know, so this is this is interesting because I'm getting that this little boy Lewis, like he was someone who escaped. He got away from this, but I'm feeling like someone collected him before the fire. Before or- the fire, like as the fire was in progress, he got out somehow. And I'm getting that he was running because I actually feel like I'm running and like, um, and then the rest of the children, they did die in that fire. Oh, that that was, and, and I could actually smell the smoke and everything. Like I can feel the heat and there's this fear of touching the door. Like, oh, because yeah. the door got so hot, oh, there's yeah. a fear of touching the door and, like, the fire in the door. Um, but this little boy, he was um, taken. I feel like he was very, very fearful. And I'm asking Eric if he knew his abductors. And Eric's saying, no, he didn't. Um, he's saying that, like, he wasn't abducted, like, I know this sounds strange, but like not on purpose. It's just someone saw him and took him. And okay. then there was like, they didn't have children of their own. Okay. 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 They wanted a kid. They wanted a child. This is very odd. Yeah. They wanted a child. Um, but Eric saying the other children did um, pass on in the fire. Like so um, four, the other four Wait, wait, yeah. So, yeah, four kids died in the fire. There were five that were nowhere to be found. One was Lewis. He's, he, uh, he lived. And the others were, were saved by the fire um, department. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and those, those that were the remaining, um, that, that they didn't find the bodies for, yeah, yeah, aside yeah. from Lewis, because I'm, yeah. you know, aside oh, oh. from him, and and I also feel like he was uh, removed from whichever state that was in, and I'm here in Kansas. Okay, all right. So is he still alive? He might they be. Nineteen forty-five. They say no. He's not alive. He's he's. Eric says he's transitioned. Oh, why? What did he die from? Because this was nineteen forty-five. I don't know how old he, he had was. a heart attack. Oh wow. Uh, so they and, I, and I'm also getting not just that he had a heart attack, but that he had issues with his lungs, okay. like okay. a COPD or something. Oh, he, yes, probably a smoker. How old was he when he died? Um, I'm in about seventy. I'm getting. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. So, um, wow. So, um. Uh, the, uh, they received a photo of him. Was that the family who took him in as their own? They, they just wanted to make sure that that they that the family knew that he was alive. Was that it? Someone felt very guilty. Oh yeah. Um, it, it weighed very heavy on their conscience. Eric is yeah. saying. Um, he's saying that they knew that they. So this was, this is also contractual, Eric saying, he's like, hold on a second, (laughs) he's saying because he actually had a much better life in this situation than he would have with his own primary family. So what was the contract then? Eric is saying the contract was in the work that he did in this life. He actually, like, this person, um, this, like, Lewis person, I'm getting that he was something, someone that worked extremely hard. He gave, he gave a lot of his time, like he did volunteering and 
things of this nature. Um, Eric says feeding the homeless. Oh, like he, he became this kind oh, of person. Like, like it opened him up more as a more thankful and like gracious person. Yeah. Um, it changed the the whole trajectory of his life. Well, did um, he know that these were not his parents? Obviously, he was nine years old. He knew. He so knew these were his parents. I'm also hearing that um, he had a cosmic connection. This individual. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, he had a knowing about his own parents as well. Okay. So he so it's yeah. it's very interesting because Eric says he was able to transition and just really change. He keeps saying change the trajectory of his life. Like That's he cool. took it upon himself. Well, wasn't he upset though when they took him? Eric says no. Wow. It, in, a, in a sense, it was like he looked at a situation and he, and he went. He didn't like us. Was he hopefully. mistreated? Was he mistreated in his uh, in his family of origin? Eric says, yes, he was. He is. Oh, beaten. God. Oh, that's not good. Okay. Wow. All right. Well, let's go on. Uh, that had kind of a happy ending. Yes. All right. Azaria Chamberlain, perhaps the most infamous missing person's case in, oh, I remember this one, in Australian history is that of Azaria Chamberlain. You've probably heard the famous phrase, a dingo ate my baby. And this is the case which made it famous. In 1980, Azaria Chamberlain, who was only nine weeks old, disappeared while her parents were camping in the outback. The mother, Linda Chamberlain, was uh, actually tried and convicted for murdering her young infant daughter and was sub subsequently sentenced to life in prison. However, after serving three years, a piece of the baby's clothing was found in a dingo lair completely by chance. Wow, the lair was located close by the campsite from which baby Azaria went missing from. That's not good grammar. Never have a dangling preposition. What's wrong with these people? I'm going to send this <laughs> the police out. Eventually, the uh, mother's conviction, as well as charges against her husband, Michael, were overturned two years later, and the charges were dropped. Nonetheless, it wasn't until, um, God, that's awful, 2012, that Azaria's death certificate was legally changed when a coroner issued an amendment to back the Chamberlain's initial claim that their baby girl have been taken from their tent by a dingo in the middle of the, God, why would you, I mean, I, why, I take them in the outback where there are animals like that, where the initial claims that their baby girl had been from, taken from the tent by a dingo in the middle of the night to be carried off and killed. Yeah, actually, is actually from 1988 in the movie in which Meryl Streep played Linda Chamberlain. The phrase is a misquote, however. The line was actually, the dingo took my baby, not ate my baby. So it's true, the right? Dingo, the dingo really took her baby. Yeah, okay. So that's, that's not an unsolved mystery. Okay. Well, uh, was so it really back? Eric says yes. He said, he said, <laughs> most of these are. <laughs> he and says what yes. Did the, what did the dingo learn from this spiritual? Yeah, it, it wasn't actually about the. the Bingo, Eric is saying. Okay. Um, Eric is being, I, I know he's he's being funny, but he's like wildlife preservation. He's he's kind of like oh, <laughs> he's God. But, um he says that um the mother was not fully aware of of the child and she was not um handling the child's like care as best as she should should have been. Yeah. And that um He's like, yeah, what do you think? Same thing you're saying. He's like, he's like, you got out in the middle of the bush where there's a bunch of live animals who you could sus God. be susceptible and fall prey to, you know, like this, yeah. this kind of stuff can really happen. Um, but it must have been her first child. I mean, a nine, I mean, if you shouldn't go out there anyway. He says, anyway, he says but if you're smell, going to, you just kind of constantly just, just put her in a papoose and yeah, I mean, yeah. You Jesus. And, and you know what it's like I can actually I know it sounds weird but I can actually smell the baby like babies have a certain scent yeah. to them and the animals got extremely oh. riled up like enticed by this um yeah. this odor yeah this this the scent and it 
it essentially was like, oh, there's something young that, you know, awesome. can't fight awesome. us off, that kind of thing. Vulnerability. Yeah. So what did, what did the, was this a lesson for the mother, the both parents or the Here's baby? It was no. a lesson for both parents yeah. and the baby contractually signed up for this. Oh, and God. that Eric is saying that the baby actually came back and lived another life. With also this? in also in Australia, with not with them. Parents? Okay, yeah, not with them. Different set of parents. So, what was the lesson? Um, responsibility, humility, loss, or it's all the above. It could be all sorts of things. Yeah, there's uh, Eric has gone down the checklist. I heard self preservation as well, um, self control, also um, being vigilant. He's saying that um, the the parents had to learn a certain responsibility um, and that they that they learned how to be less negligent in their life. This yeah. is weird. Yeah. Did That's, they tend to, were, were, did they tend to be self-centered? Um, and Eric and, says yes, yeah. very much so. He said, yeah, very much so. And He's nothing like, that happened to me. Right. He's saying this humbled them down a notch well, that's good. Humility to play. Take that, yeah was that something that was very common in, in their in their lives past mm -hmm. future also the pride as well oh, yeah yeah, mm. yeah. invulnerable invulnerability ability yeah. i've watched that one up all right sean flynn f l s e a n flynn f l y n n Sean Flynn, oh, Errol Flynn. Sean Flynn was the son of actress Lily Damita and Errol Flynn, who was a dashing guy. Errol Flynn attempted several different careers, such as musician and actor, before settling into photojournalism. I had no idea. It was as a pho photojournalist that Flynn seemed to have found his calling. Searching for extraordinary images, Flynn often traveled with special for uh, forces units, as well as irregulars who operated in remote areas. Um, he was going for, he was known for going to extreme links, including dangerous ones. Oh, great. I see where this is going. In April 1970, during the Vietnam War, Flynn mm -hmm. was on assignment in Cambodia with another photojournalist, Dana Stone. Stone had a similar reputation as Flynn for going to extra links in dangerous places. The two were apparently captured by communist guerrillas, but what happened after that is a mystery to this day. Flynn's mother paid huge amounts of money trying to locate him. Well, where does Sean Flynn come into this? But to no avail. Neither man was either seen or heard from again. Oh, wait. Uh, oh, oh, just Sean. Okay, this is Sean. I thought they were, I was stuck on Errol Flynn. I'm sorry. Oh, neither man, I'd say Flynn at, um, at his mother's urging, Demita, Lily Demita, was eventually de declared dead in absentia in 1984. So what happened to Sean Flynn? Son so right off the back, um, Eric says, yes, he was kidnapped. He was, uh oh Kidnapped and the purpose of the kidnapping was to actually, um, uh, uh, ha hold him for ransom. I'm getting and that the gorilla they, forces in, in mm -hmm. Cambodia. And yeah, and they wanted they wanted some cash up front. Like this was a this was a thing. And at that time, they really didn't care about um, Americans being in their country. Eric saying, so it was kind of like a uh, like a warning sign. Like yeah, you come here. This is the kind of thing that happens to you. Like you don't belong here. It was that kind of thing. Um, Eric says that um, that this child actually. It was a child, I don't think. Endured some really. No, it wasn't a torturous, child. Torturous. This this person, the the it was okay. like a torturous type of event. Okay, Sean Flynn. So, Sean uh, Flynn and his. Fellow photojournalist Dana Stone, they were captured by the communist guerrillas. And uh, did they know that he was the son of a famous actor, Errol Flynn? Eric says yes. That's why they were holding him for. Oh. for 
That's why they're trying to get the ransom out of them. So yeah. did they, did they um, contact they any money to try to get the, the ransom money? Eric says that there was an attempt. Um, <clears throat> Who did they try to contact? They tried to contact the father. Errol? Did they try, but did they? Did they succeed? Eric says it wasn't successful. Why? Um, Bad connection? Didn't pay the phone bill? What? Satellite phone? Kind of like someone like screening. I feel like there's a second person like screening like those calls or uh, the messages oh, didn't okay. come together. It was like, um, oh. like, like he got lo like lost in translate, lost in translation is what I'm getting. Oh no. Lost in translation. Um, but this person that they took, like they, this poor person, like seriously endured some torturous events. Oh. Like, and I'm, and I'm feeling scared like a child though. This yeah. Is, oh yeah. Yeah. It was, um, it was like the boogeyman is coming to get me like that kind of feeling like and i don't have any protection whatsoever and there's well, no well, here i don't understand know? what why didn't they tell ask sean you better get us a way to connect with your dad because we can't get through i'm getting that the attempt was was made like there were attempts made and just there was, was not that connection. It well, what about, why didn't he say, hey, what about your mom? Give us somebody. Because Errol Flynn was a big wig. He probably did have many people blocking. Yeah, you know. I'm getting layers. And yeah. this is why, like, there wasn't that direct connection as it needed to be. So they didn't try to get in touch with the mom? They didn't want the mom. They wanted the father. They wanted the money. They wanted the source. They wanted to yeah. But the mom could have connected with the, the the mom would have connected maybe with the dad. What dumbasses? Yeah, this is <laughs> Eric says. Yeah, they were a little backwards. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, it's just the way he's, the way he talks is sometimes kind oh. of funny. So oh. <laughs> Eric showed me they had their heads in their butts. <laughs> God. So how long was he kept in captivity before he died, obviously? Three months. Oh, Jesus. Three months. And they really tortured him. Like, I'm showing, he, Eric is showing me that they, like, pulled his fingernails and they beat him with what looks like, a, in the South, they used to use a switch. This looks kind of like some kind of bamboo or something that they hit mm -hmm. you over the back with. He had a lot of, um, ooh, a lot of um, lacerations yeah. in his back. Um, ooh, I get the chillies about that. Um, and yeah. they also, um, they really did like mutilate parts of his body. It's pretty gruesome. Like even oh. if they would have got him back, literally they wouldn't have got him back in one piece. It would have been. Oh, what kind of, where, where do they contain him and his uh, and what, what Erica's is showing me it's like um kind of like in a like what looks like a rural like i'm seeing animals like ox and things no, but like it, that it, was it a cage made of bamboo it was a solid structure or it was a solid structure like a like a, a room okay okay i'm feeling like a room and it doesn't look like it looks like one of those like an, an an indigenous like type of makeshift like hut or like oh, okay. with the door that kind of thing okay um eric says no plumbing no electricity oh okay so he just had to poop on the he floor was, and stuff i was also getting that he was um i got the feeling of darkness like it's very sad he was locked in the dark like oh. just left in the dark like this poor man went through so much he endured so much like Oh, I, so what what was his, I don't want to hear anymore. What was his ultimate cause of death? Starvation. Oh. Starvation. And what was it? Obviously a spiritual contract, but for whom? It was a spiritual contract for him. Um, he did return and he, he came back through another life with different parents as well. Um, and that, and after that life, he came back as a female gendered person.
Okay. And what what was he here to learn or teach? He taught his parents about um, money, like, and greed. And he, Eric is saying that it's, it's about appreciating what you have, like, that whole, like, thankfulness. Mm -hmm. um, and the non non judgment like i'm also getting that the parents like inflicted a lot of pressure on him to be a specific way okay. and those interests did not align at all times yeah. like it just wasn't there um eric says that he's doing much better now <laughs> oh yeah 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 all right so did he did they learn that lesson Eric says to a certain extent, they yeah. had to both come back as well. Yeah. All right, the last one, Theodosia Burr Alston. Oh yeah, Aaron Burr. Okay, the eldest child of former US Vice President Aaron Burr, who uh, was disgraced after being formu formally accused of committing treason, was Theodosia Burr Alston. That's the eldest child. In addition, she was also married to the South Carolina's, uh, Carolina's governor at the time, Joseph Alston. Five years after the fall of her father from grace, she lost her son. She went into such deep mourning that it affected her health. The only bright spot for her was that her father was to be allowed to return to the U.S. after being exiled to Europe. They did that, Jesus. In 1812, Alston... Um, Theodosia Alston boarded the Patriot, which was a schooner, with an intended destination to New York. She was to be reunited with her father on that New Year's Eve. She traveled alone due to her husband, who had only uh, recently been sworn in as governor, was unable to accompany her because of his duties as governor. However, the schooner never made it to where it was supposed to go. Some believe the vessel capsized. Oh, she has horrible luck or sank due to a major storm, which had been documented to be in the area at the time. But others believe, that we believe it was captured by pirates. Whatever happened to it, the vessel nor its passengers were ever seen again. Well. Yeah, Eric's being funny. He just went like this. Oh, and no. I was like, Eric. And he's like, yeah, they all drowned. He lost her son, and then this. So, so mm -hmm. what? So the pirates are, 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 the, are he said all the people on the schooner, like on the ship, they drowned. It 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 went down. So okay, because of the storm. Mm hmm Well, okay, is there a contract in that one? Boy, that family it's like the Kennedy family. I know. That's that's very unfortunate. Um Eric says yes, there was a contract, um, but it was more so not about I'm not getting that it was directly about the family. It was more about the people that they influence. He's saying that they had a lot of, I'm getting like, um, you know, when you have your, your hand in the, in the pot or your hand in the jar, like yeah. lots of different hands in different places. Yeah. Um, they were very influential regarding their power, what they um, wanted to pose or press in politics. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, Eric's also saying that there was an issue with some of the, um, I guess, like some of the ideas that were sparked by this family um, that didn't resonate with other people in political power. And it was, there was conflict. But he's also saying that this schooner incident, like, um, he's showing me like the Titanic. He's being funny <laughs> it's like the ship going down and under he's saying that um that had that was not nefarious at all that was mother okay, no pirates yeah he says that was mother nature doing it no pirates involved um he's being so funny he's showing me captain morgan <laughs> oh. will it ever be found will the will the will it ever be found the schooner He's showing me that it was destroyed, like scattered. Lots oh, of yeah. Pieces. Oh, pieces. Like I'm seeing like cargo and like um, suitcases oh, yeah. in the water, like metal shredded up. Like things oh, yeah, no. scattered mm -hmm. around. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anything else you want to say about any of these? He said, no, mom, proceed. 
<laughs> okay, well, that's it, everybody. Y'all check her out, Stephanie Paris at inoracorner.com. And I will see you later. Love you, Eric. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Loves you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs>